Welcome back from that break. Time to get you updated on some business news on Joy News Prime. First, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata has outlined his immediate priority as he formally assumed office today. Some areas he intends to give much attention have been captured in a statement issued by the Finance Ministry, and George Raffae has more. According to the minister, protecting the public purse, stabilizing the economy, spearheading anti-corruption, increasing revenue, and introducing policies that would help grow the economy for the private sector will be critical under his tenure as minister. Another area Kenofriata says he'll be focusing on is cleaning up public finances, managing the enormous debt which has hit about 120 billion Ghana cities in order to create the needed fiscal space and invest in critical infrastructure. The minister also expressed his commitment to the IMF program by ensuring that they meet all the necessary structural banks match. The minister also expressed his commitment to the IMF program by ensuring that they meet all the necessary structural benchmarks that have been suggested. The minister also expressed his commitment to the IMF program by ensuring that they meet all the necessary structural benchmarks that may be suggested. The minister is also looking at the double-digit growth through policies and strategies that would help increase revenue, reduce waste, and control spending, as well as grow the economy to create jobs. The minister added in the statement that he is optimistic the president's first budget will clear the path towards fulfilling the manifesto pledge and opening the economic space for private sector to thrive. He concluded in a statement that he wants to leave behind the ministry professional global standard in treasury and risk management to give meaning to the enforcement of the public finance management. Now, the Integrated Business Establishment Survey report has been launched by the Ghana Statistical Service in Accra. The report, which aims at bridging the information gap between established enterprises and policymakers in the country, identified the services sector as a major contributor to employment in the country. Acting government statistician Bawadia noted, despite their engagement in one form of employment or the other, about 3 million people are not earning sustained levels of income. The primary focus of the Integrated Business Establishment Survey, IBES, is to provide reliable, timely, and relevant economic data for the country to help in planning and policy formulation. According to the acting government statistician, Bawadier, the outcome of the result emphasizes the service sector is leading contributor to the nation's economic growth. Results from the study further indicates that nationally, non-household establishments engaged 3,383,206 persons. Soon, there will be presentations bringing to four what pertains in the various regions. There is, however, some level of gender imbalance across all regions and districts when the data is disaggregated by sex. In fact, about six out of every 10 persons engaged by the establishments are males. The secular distribution of the persons engaged views that eight out of every 10 employees are engaged in the service sector. It is therefore not surprising that we have the service sector contributing a little more than half of Ghana's GDP. He assured business owners data collected are treated with utmost confidentiality. On his part, head of the industrial statistics and coordinator of the IBES, Anthony Cracker, is optimistic the data will help inform potential investors to make right investment plans and policy decisions. If we want to know which business is already in existence, where can they be located in a particular area, and how can your business feed into the operations? Yes, to that extent, I would say yes, it can help in minimizing the cost. Because here, you don't have to do your feasibility studies on knowing what is on the ground. The feasibility has been done for you already. You have the data on as to the distribution of the part of service already. So you don't need to do that feasibility study. That's it has been done for you already. So that cost will be taken off as an investor. The business register will be made available at the various regions in the country, as well as the website of the Ghana Statistical Service and various regional coordinating councils for use by researchers and investors. In other news tonight, Ghana would by April this year issue policy guidelines to regulate cloud technology for the storage and usage of data in the country. 
Executive Director of the Data Protection Commission, Teki Akwete Falconer, disclosed this at a digital transformation workshop organized by a multinational tech company, Microsoft, in collaboration with the Commission. Cloud technology, which enables individuals, businesses and governments store and access data and programs over the Internet instead of a computer's hard drive, has become important as Ghana goes through the digital transformation process. The workshop brought together various stakeholders from the public and private sectors to deliberate on outstanding issues related to the development of cloud technology in Ghana. General Manager of Microsoft Ghana, Derek Apia, shed more light on the importance of cloud technology in the quest for digital transformation. Getting that cloud to you means that you can use that computing power to do many things with data, with the cloud and with analytics and where things go. It means that you can do things on uh, to change yourself digitally. It means you can empower your employees to actually uh, work from anywhere. It means you can optimize your operations by anticipating when things will go wrong so you can get there quickly. It means you can transform your products so you can do things like launch Uber, which is the biggest uh, taxi company in the world, but has no taxes. It's in Ghana. It, has, it owns no taxes. So that's how the cloud can enable digital transformation in Ghana and elsewhere. The workshop also gave an opportunity for stakeholders to identify and discuss a set of rules which should guide cloud computing in the country. Executive Director of the Data Protection Commission, Teki Akwete Falconer, tells Joy Business the guidelines which will be rolled out by April this year would prioritize the privacy of users. In the agreements with cloud providers like Microsoft, yes. they need to ensure that they are meeting the regulatory requirements that we have put out there. Um, later this year, I'm sure by April, we'll issue out some guidelines in collaboration with Microsoft. We'll issue out some guidelines on cloud um, computing and cloud computing policies for data protection as well to help them meet those requirements. But the ultimate that we say is that you as a data controller must put in place adequate measures. So don't just go and hide your um, information in Microsoft Cloud. Make sure that all the things that they are talking about, which is we're putting in adequate security, we're protecting the information, you really understand it and they they have actually done it to protect because when when your information, let's say a bank for instance in Ghana puts information in the cloud and it is compromised, we hold that bank responsible for it. So those are the kind of things that we are urging the data controllers to be aware of when they are using the cloud, to make sure that um, they come to the right agreement in order to protect the information. The workshop under the theme Ghana's Digital Transformation Journey marked World Privacy Day, which fell on January 28. A great now in the chairman of the Community 3 Livestock Farmers Association, Christian Mankwa, has advised unemployed youth in the Tema area not to shun agricultural activities in order to become self-sufficient. Speaking at the inauguration of the Farmers Association in Tema, he deplored the practice where a section of the youth idles around without any productive activity. He urged government to invest in some infrastructural developments in agricultural areas to improve the sector. It's unfortunate we have an uh, unemployment association in our country. We, the Association of Community Trade Tema Livestock, urge it to all youth in Ghana to participate in the youth in agriculture. There's a lot of benefit to rare animals. So to do rare animals, you never lose unless you, uh, you mismanage you mismanage, uh, what you're doing before you get lost. So we are planning to all youth to engage themselves in agriculture. We call all Ghanaians to know that we are doing agriculture newly in our this association. We keep our animals indoor and feed them. We don't leave them outside and eat anything anyhow. We the association has accepted that you make sure any time or any every month veterinary officers will come to our farm and make sure that we treated all our animals and give them healthy food, healthy water. 
A quick update on some news from the telecom sector and reports about major talks between two telecom operators, Tigo and Airtel, have been given some credence. This follows the announcement by Chairman of Bati Airtel, Sumil Bati Mittal, that they are working to exit from Ghana and other African countries within a year. So when could this deal be completed? And is French telecom giant Orange really set to take over the merged entity? George Affe has more. For industry watchers, this development might not be new at all. However, the reason why some have taken it somewhat serious is the planned exit by the parent company of Airtel, Bati, meaning either the owner of Airtel Ghana sells it to a new investor or it falls up. Something industry watchers say it wouldn't happen. Having engaged the two local companies of record, they have all not denied the story. However, sources close to the industry regulator, NCA, have confirmed it, but say they are yet to be officially notified about it. The source was also not sure about the French telecom giant Orange coming to acquire the two firms. This is because the French-based operator had earlier made attempts to acquire one of the two, but had to abolish it later. But the source close to these two companies is insisting that Orange will come in again and possibly acquire the merged entity, that is Tigo and Etel. They even report that Orange has started engaging some officials in the industry on its coming and even offering them some positions. Already Orange is said to have acquired some Etel operations in some African countries. Persons close to this measure say it could take a while before the engagement is concluded. That is, if everything goes on well with all the investors. What does this measure mean to subscribers? Well, it could improve services and possibly a reduction in tariffs and the cost of using the service that was being offered by these two operators. The merge entity, if it comes on, could move the new owner to the second position in the market, commanding about 26% and making it the second after MTN. This will leave the country with just five operators, which some analysts say is critical, looking at developments in the market, which will actually lead to an improved service being offered to subscribers. And we continue to monitor to see how things unfold in the telecom sector. That'll be it for business news. My name is Daryl Kwa. The news returns after this break.